All right. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let's get into it. So, I don't even have any notes for this review. Straight into it. We know what it was about. Um, I've watched the episode twice. I have watched a few reviews and reaction videos from the likes of Star Wars Theory and my guys over at Rex and the Round Show. Um, yeah, I'm ready to get into it. <laughs> Season 2, Episode 5, Chapter 13. Here we go. We know what's coming. And I love that Dave Filoni didn't even toy around with us. No space shots, no travel log, like straight to it. Ahsoka is coming. <laughs> and she's here. She arrives in the first two seconds, not the first five minutes. Even Bo Katan's like five minutes show up was shocking. A lot of people are saying, wow, she showed up, you know, right away. But I'm saying, nah, she showed up four episodes and two seconds into the episode. So we've been anticipating this. We've been wanting this. We've been waiting for this, thirsting for this. And so to start off the episode with her like that is really the culmination of four episodes worth of anticipation. So I'm good with it. Ahsoka drops in. She's in the forest or this sort of burnt out forest on Corvus. Uh... Yeah. It was amazing. Like, I kind of gasped when I first saw her. Because I I know it's Rosario Dawson. First, that's confirmed. Then, her white lightsabers. The sound of them. Oh, so good. So good. Then... She's cutting through these guards. You know, they've got the 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 face uh, face shields and breathers. So it reminded me somewhat of Solo. It reminded me a little bit of some of the, uh, the guards on Kessel and the guards on, you know, and I know that those are the pikes. These aren't pikes, but they they have that look of, you know, the, the fully covered face with the breather uh, apparatus. Incredible, just incredible. She's cutting through them like like hot knife through butter. Go, go, go. I'm cheering. I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm with it. Uh, and I'm still stuck on the fact that I'm looking at Ahsoka live action. Not animated Ahsoka, but she looks good. The, the, the adaptation from cartoon or animation to live action is often a really tough transition because animation is such, and we love it for this reason, but it's overblown. It's a little bit disproportionate. It's cartoon. It's it's not reality. So they can do things with the physics and the movement, but to see her live action, her her mantras, um, and, and I love that they creased when she moved because this is flesh. This is like our faces. This is like our necks, uh, our knees, our elbows. Where there is flesh, there, we're gonna get repetitive creasing. I love that they left that in. I love that it wasn't CGI and flowing perfectly. I love that it hit her shoulders, you know? I also love that her horns were a little bit swept back because we were, that's one of the things we were wondering. All of us collectively is how are they gonna do this? Um, I thought that they did shock T terrible in the cut scene that wasn't in the prequels. It was filmed, but it wasn't in the actual prequel movie when uh, I think, I believe Grievous killed her and her, her horns and mantras just didn't translate because they were CGI. I, I think there was some practical effect, but the way that they moved were just way too CGI. This was dope. Horns swept back a little bit. When she turned to the side, you could really see them. They got her back mantra 
perfect. That's the one I was wondering how they would do. Um, this is fantastic. Like, I'm over the moon. I'm over the moon. So, okay, okay, okay. That's just the first five minutes. Two seconds to five minutes. You're cutting through all the guards that are out in the forest looking for her. She's moving in and out of this mist. It's so beautiful. She gets to the doors of the city. And she says, you know, come out, you know. And I, and I love that the magistrate had this sort of timber, this tone, this pacing to her voice. Um, she was low-key really good. Like, we were all looking for Ahsoka, but the magistrate of this town was, like, low-key very good. I love the theme of that, that Western thing that continues to be a thread through all of this. You're not really finding out names. You're getting titles. Um, I know that we figured out Cobb Vanth, and I know that we already know Cara Dune. However, I love that they're the marshals, and this is the magistrate. Um, that's kind of cool, because the focus is really on the Mando and on this episode, Ahsoka. And then Jaren gets to Corvus. He arrives at Kaladin. I believe it's Kaladin. He arrives... Uh, he has a little tete-a-tete -tete with uh, the, the main guard, the main bodyguard, the main, uh, I don't know if he's a general or whatnot, but he's the magistrate's head honcho. They have a little small talk. He gets inside. The magistrate wants to see him. He witnesses, you know, these, these kind of downtrodden people. Um, again, Western motif, you know, the bad sheriff is in charge. Uh, Black Bart is in charge of the town, you know. So... He gets inside and makes a deal, as he's often done throughout the series. Uh, trade. Information for action. Uh, the magistrate wants him to go kill Ahsoka. Um, is he going to do it? I mean, he's a Mandalorian. He's equipped. Skip to that. I love that we get to see a Jedi, former Jedi. I am no Jedi, she would tell you. But I love that you get to see a Jedi and a Mandalorian go at it because for a small glimpse, it's just like a 30-second exchange. You get to see how the Mandalorians did well against the Jedi back in the days when they were all out warring with each other. And we find out that pure Beskar. Now, it's been said that it can deflect blaster bolts We've never seen it up against a lightsaber, but we see that pure Beskar is formidable against a lightsaber. It stops the, the dual-wielded blades right on his uh, wrist cuff, uh, and it's incredible. He parries, gets get pushes her back, hits her with the flamethrower. She flips out of the way. He uses his grappling cable. She does a really cool move of flipping over a tree and stringing him up to the point where he has to cut his own cable, drops down, and they have their standoff. They quickly resolve it, but it was a really cool way to see them battle against each other real quickly. Um, Ahsoka's moving like we would expect. Again, animation to live action. Um, they got it. They did it. Her flips, her twists, her spins, her parries. She's great with the two wielded swords. Like I'm saying, Ahsoka, but I know it's Rosario Dawson. That's how. That's how well they did it. To me, that's how well they did it. Is she melts into the role, and I'm looking at Ahsoka. I'm not looking at Rosario Dawson play Ahsoka. Now that's a credit to everybody involved. It's a credit to direction, of course. Filoni, this is his baby, so he's gonna do it right. But it's a credit to her, for melting into the role the right way she did her homework uh some of the looks the head tilts um it's definitely late clone wars um rebels ahsoka uh she's paced she's got a little bit of sadness to her because this would be after she had encountered anakin well darth vader now um, she knows that Anakin's gone. She's disenfranchised with Jedi life. Um, she's kind of this recluse on this world trying to free these this town and get some information. So all of that is, is really well played. I really, really like that. 
Um, she starts to talk to Baby Yoda, and we find out that uh, the child, Baby Yoda, his name is Grogu, and they don't actually speak. They're communicating uh, mental telepathy through the Force, and she's finding out quite a bit of stuff. But you can see her measuring up the relationship between Din and now Grogu. And he even says his name, and the child looks like, oh, wow, he knows my name. <laughs> Which is, that was a really cool reaction, uh, a very real, realistic reaction. I like that. I like that a lot. So, and there's, there's another cute little interaction where, you know that little ball on the shifter, on the knob, that uh, Din Djarin continues to tell the child not to mess with. Um, he pulls it off through the force as they're landing on the planet um, and then puts it in his pocket like a dad. He's like, I told you not to bring this. I love those kind of interactions between them because it's building towards something that's actually going to be said toward the end of this episode. And it's been building the whole time. So Ahsoka says she wants to test him a bit. She wants to know of if he has force abilities because she mentions that she knows of only one other being like this. And she actually says, Master Yoda. Ka-kling! We got our link to the original trilogy. We've got our link to the prequels. That's pretty cool. We've got our link to, well, we, we she's the obvious link to Clone Wars, but even more so. So again, this world building, this connective tissue I talked about in the last review continues to be a thing that um, pulls this whole world together, and I love it. I love it. Okay, so she tests him to see if, in fact, he has the Force. And she pushes, she Force pushes a rock toward him. They love Force pushing rocks, these Jedi, don't they? <laughs> um, she Force pushes a rock to him, and all he does is catch it and hold it. Uh, he's hiding his powers, obviously, because we learned that what she knows about him. We learned that he was trained on Coruscant just before the Clone Wars broke out. And he had several uh, teachers. I don't know if they were his masters, but he, he had several teachers because he's a youngling, technically. So he had several teachers and he was taught the Force, but he learned to hide that because as we've seen with other force wielders. Once that becomes apparent, they become a target. So he's hidden his force powers. He shows Din because Din Djarin is his keeper. Din, Din Djarin is like his dad and he trusts him and he cares. So that leads to the next interaction where Ahsoka says, you do it. And uh, he does, he, he, but he won't move the rock. There's no connection to this rock. Din pocketed the little knob that Grogu wanted to bring off the ship. So he takes it out of his pocket and goes, go ahead, take it. I know you want this. And of course, the baby like, whoo, force grabs it, pulls it right over. He's happy. And then Din, the, a really cool reaction for me was that Din Djarin is like, way to go, kid. He's like a proud dad. He's like Han Solo when Luke did something good. And so... Uh, that was really cool to see, and it and it, I think, further uh, linked them together in Ahsoka's eyes. It further explained that she was not going to be taking Baby Yoda. She was not going to be taking Grogu. Uh, but she hides that fact. I was interested that she wasn't squeaky clean Ahsoka. She was battle tested. She was reserved. She was a little bit w weary and wary both and so um she says you know he he makes the deal of i'll help you with your problem if you promise that he'll get trained again i think that's really interesting that his task was to get baby yoda to a jedi but now he's very concerned with his upbringing his education his training he's becoming more and more a dad as we're watching this that is really interesting they make the deal. They head into town. Really cool line. A Jedi and a Mandalorian, they'll never see it coming. All right, cool, 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 cool. Showdown at the OK Corral, basically. They get in. 
I'll keep this one short because you got to watch it. Like, I can't explain how it's happening. But she's stealthy. She's good. She's quick. And every time she ignites those sabers, the white light shines on her face and her eyes and, sh and her skin. And it's so Ahsoka. And I love it. And she's going, she's going ham in there. Um, then Jaren has a standoff while she, Ahsoka, goes in to deal with the magistrate. This was really interesting because it was more, it was less a a battle or a fight and more a duel. And in, in the the guys are kind of in the style of samurai. So they face off. Really cool. Um, we find out again. This is a her her weapon. The magistrate's weapon is a full Beskar staff or spear. Full, pure Beskar. Earlier in the episode, Din pings it off of his armor and you hear it ring because that was going to be his prize for killing Ahsoka. Obviously, he didn't do that. But the Magistrate's weapon of choice, and I don't know how she got it, but obviously Imperial ties, perhaps, but her weapon is a full spear of Beskar. Pure Beskar. And so you know, because of how it was set up earlier, that Ahsoka's going to have a little battle on her hands because she can't cut through this weapon. And so they go at it, and it was really good. It was really, really good. To the point where, I mean, I know Ahsoka was toying with her because she needed the information, and we've seen Ahsoka battle Maul. If she can battle Maul, this magistrate is nothing. But she's got to get this information so she can't just destroy this enemy. So she has to parry and twist and spin. She actually loses one of her lightsabers off of a good move from the magistrate. And you can see then she gets upset and just like goes, 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 goes. Boom, got her. And this is where... This is where we get the, the, the big reveal. Now, most people would think Ahsoka Tano is the big reveal in this. But she's just the cake she's the tasty cake we wanted but there's icing the icing on the cake is ahsoka has the magistrate dead to rights holds her lightsaber up to her neck and goes tell me where your master is and we're like what master tell me where he is where is grand admiral thrawn <laughs> Okay, ever since the Timothy Zahn books in the in the expanded universe and now Legends, ah, I've loved the idea of Thrawn. He wasn't full evil. He was calculating. He was using the the his affiliation with the Empire to his own ends. He was just an enigma of a character, and a lot of people love him. And then going on into um, Rebels, he became integral to that plot because now we're talking about Ezra and Sabine. So we find out that bomb drop. Are we going to see Thrawn this season? Is Ahsoka coming back? Is she going to get her own show? She's good enough to get her own show. And... Rosario Dawson signed a big contract and she was really good. Like, all due respect to Ashley Eckstein as the voice of Ahsoka, Rosario Dawson is live action Ahsoka now. It's burned in. So they need to just go ahead and team up, power up, you know, Ahsoka Tano this way, Ahsoka Tano that way. But I can't front. She owned it. She owned it. And I know a lot of people are in love with Ashley Eckstein and they were feeling for her. But you can't tell me that Rosario didn't do her homework and that they didn't speak because she had the mannerism. She had even some of the vocal tone and the vocal inflection and the way that she says things and paces things later on in Clone Wars and Rebels for sure. Um, Ashley is amazing. And for years upon years upon years, she has been Ahsoka, the only Ahsoka we know. I'm sorry to say, we know another Ahsoka now. 
That was Ahsoka. So back to what I was saying. Grand Admiral Thrawn has now been invoked. Just like the first time we've heard Ahsoka in live action, this, I believe, is the first time that we have heard Grand Admiral Thrawn in live action. Wow. We get bo Thrawn, Ahsoka. This rings true that that would kind of mean Ezra. That would kind of mean Sabine. Um, and, okay, here's the exciting part, for me at least. Some people are kind of toying with the idea of where in the timeline is this happening. I have a theory. I believe if you have seen Rebels and you've seen the time jump where Ahsoka goes to get Sabine to then go find Ezra, who they believe is with Thrawn, this happens just before she goes to get Sabine. That is why Sabine is not in this episode like so many of us wanted. I really wanted to see that colorful Mandalorian armor. I wanted to see the hair. I wanted to see yet another person. Uh, Sabine is one of three characters that we've seen in action holding the Darksaber, being Vizsla, bo and her. So I, I was excited to see her in this episode. Maybe she's on the planet with Ahsoka just after the time jump in Rebels and they're, they're, this is a stopover to find Thrawn. But I now believe that this was just before. This is the gap of the time jump from the end of Rebels to the time jump walk-off that they did. When Ahsoka shows up, Sabine puts on her helmet and goes with her. I believe Ahsoka was coming from Corvus because she just found the evidence of where Thrawn is and now they can go off on the mission. That's why she wasn't there. Yo! <laughs> I'm so excited about that. Um, the Filoni verse that everyone has been rumored to be happening... I think is happening right before our eyes. I don't know that we're going to see Ahsoka again in The Mandalorian. I don't know that we're going to see Bo-Katan again. Although Bo-Katan makes more sense because I think that this is all building toward um, some sort of resolution with Mandalore and the Darksaber and Moff Gideon. So I think Bo-Katan is going to come back. The Night Owls we're going to see again. But I don't know about Ahsoka. I'm not sure. Oh. And Ahsoka's owl, I know I'm getting that wrong. I have to look up and see what the uh, what the proper term is. Uh, uh, but her owl is there. Some some think that he was spotted on a tree as Din Djarin was coming into the forest where Ahsoka was staying. Um, so look for that. Look for that and see if, if her totem, if that uh, remnant of the three force beings that um, she and Anakin and Obi-Wan encountered, the father, uh, the son and the daughter, light and dark, joining of two. If that remnant stays with her because everywhere she goes, that can be found, that can be seen. We saw it at the end of uh, Clone Wars in the scene where Vader picks up her discarded lightsabers and it's flying overhead. So that would be really cool if that were the case. And I think it might be. Although, it would beg the question of, does it travel through the Force? I mean, how to get off the planet when she left? <gasps> or was she still there? And that's why Vader paused. Never mind. This is about the Mandalorian. It's not about Clone Wars. But I'm thinking about it. Okay. That's it. Go watch it. It's dope. Um, shouts out to, uh, all those that helped me with this, even though they didn't know they helped me with this. Rex and Around loved their episode, their watch along. Um, Star Wars Theory and his, uh, his chat after, um, Den of Nerds and their chat immediately after I was up super late last night watching all of this. Um, so shouts out to them. Thanks very much. Appreciate you. We'll talk soon. Peace.